How many of you was difficult to wake up this morning? It's like right now the morning's a little darker now. This the time of how much sunlight we have during the day. It makes it harder to wake up in the morning. To me, I'm not very, it's not difficult for me, maybe because I'm high, very hyperactive. The moment I see just a little bit of uh, of uh, light, I wake up. Even if it's the light from the uh, gas station across the street, I wake up. But this morning, I would like to share something that God put in my heart. In this country, there's seasons where there's certain holidays that are celebrated and during this month and this month actually the theme is the harvest so I would like to talk about some of the verses that talk about the harvest before reading these verses I want to give a little bit of background of what's happening during this time and I'm going to read from Mark the book of Mark chapter 4 a little background of this that we have to understand is that it's for reason of what's happening so we can understand is that sometimes when we read the word we relate it to you as if the word of God was written this past few years but this word was written way back then through other authors that have been passed down throughout time. So the chapters of the gospel are found under this type of life that they're living. And whilst I am speaking, I want you to pay attention that I will be reading because there are some things that may sound similar to what you're going through today. Maybe from back home in your country, or maybe in the situation that you currently find yourself in. But Jesus is teaching in the midst of a time that's difficult. A problematic time in which the government and society of the Israelites and Jews were living. And it wasn't e easy for them. That's why when we read the Gospels... Even the Old Testament, we read, those of us who read the gospel, we read that once in a while, it talks about they're waiting for a Savior, a Messiah. But it's because time after time, they lived under, under government that would suppress them. During this time in which we are found now, the book of Mark, they're living under the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, interestingly, they have... Have you ever heard about the Roman peace? Don says yes. That is that you could live in peace. But it was in peace, but with the iron fist. There will be peace. You know, the good way or the bad way. That's different than the peace that God gives you. I'll put that as on the side there. Side note. So the Jews were waiting for a Messiah that would bring restoration. They would expect them as someone who would come to rule over them in which they would be free. They would be free to enjoy some of the stuff, the freedoms that they have, which they never got to enjoy during the government under the government that they were living and what was it that they were suffering so and i'm going to give this to you so i'm going to give this to you so you can have an understanding of what it is so we can say what's behind the curtain so you need to know what happened during that time so what was it that the israelites or the jews suffered during that time now listen well they would face difficulties to live under the roman empire Primarily because they had different pract religious practices. And this would conflict with the polystatic system that was in place at that time. What was causing 
it would develop sus, you know, someone would be suspect or it would end up in persecution towards the Jews. So the Jews had diff different customs and practices, including the laws in which they lived under, according to their, uh, per their diet. And this laws that they lived upon would take them to live in an isolated from society. So they were pointed out. Not because, and just like us, you know, we can identify ourselves something like to this because we are different to the society or the culture that is in this country. We have a different language. We have a different diet. It's a lot different than the of the dominant culture that we find ourselves in. So there are differences. And sometimes we can identify ourselves because this society causes us to isolate ourselves or, or if, I, if I'm saying it correctly, it isolates us. Yay for me. It was a word that's difficult to pronounce at times. So because they were different from the Roman culture, even though the Jews and the, Israel, and the Israelis had, they were free to come and go as they pleased, within their own land, they would always stand out. Do you identify yourself? They would cause some sort of suspect. Chapter 4. Oh, on top of that, say put the icing on the cake what would happen that the Roman Empire would impose a tax that were high a high tax that was imp imposed on them so what would happen if there were religious leaders and societal leaders even there were Israelites that were They were working with the government and they would make sure that this was put in place. They would ensure that the Jews would pay the, to pay the taxes that they had to. So, and even the taxes that they even themselves, the tax collectors had to pay. So I'm giving you a little bit of a background just so you know what was the context behind what was what was going on in this social political environment of that time with this I identify myself because in these days I live even though I'm a, even though I'm a US citizen I live in a society that it's social political that sometimes it hurts me what I hear I can identify myself with them during this time with what they were going through at that time that they were reading. Now, chapter four, we're going to go to chapter four of this book, focuses on, on seeds and sowing. It's a chapter in the book of Mark that talks about seeds. And Jesus does it in a form of a parable. Now, we'll continue to talk about parables. So I'm going to give you a teaching. When Jesus talks in parables, he's giving a teaching. <clears throat> and this chapter talks about seeds, harvesting, sowing, because he wanted to teach the people. Because he didn't want to teach them how to do it, how to sow, how to plant seeds, how to harvest. This wasn't his point that he was giving. He would be he would teach this way because there was a message behind what he was saying. Because in that region around the Sea of Galilee, which was a good land that was good for cultivating. So the parables are like puzzles. So let's say that there were people that would that would plant 
the seeds and they would listen to the message of God and they may be able to interpret what he was saying but maybe their interpretation could be wrong so he even says it there that he who has ears may let him hear the parables are like puzzles I have a, I had a friend. Well, I have a friend. I say have because he's still alive. So he's still present. So he was, he was from Puerto Rico. Christian Edwin, if you remember. He would say at times things that he would say as a saying. As a proverb. He would say those proverbs. We, were, we didn't grow up in Puerto Rico. So we didn't, we didn't understand what he was saying. So when he s would see that we had that look. Like we were dumbfounded, we didn't know what he was saying. He would explain it to us. The parables were similar to that. They were teachings. The idea is to be is to establish a a spiritual truth along with the everyday truth. So Jesus was teaching with parables, knowing that the audience were were not going to understand him completely what he was trying to say. He would use images or metaphors to be able to give his teaching. Now, these images and these metaphors have clues. That a lot of them did not understand. And the biblical verses within the word have clues they're like keys to be able to decipher the message in a way in a wise way to hide truth to those who were persecuting him or who would wanted him for him and his followers so now to bring it up today a lot of times singers now to put in perspective in today's in today's day and age, a lot of singers sometimes sing lyrics that a lot of times that their lyrics that they're giving has some sort of a justification or information about social justice. For example, I know a lot of them don't like Bad Bunny. How many of you have you heard them? Be honest. How many have you heard Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny, uh, I agree, message today is down on the pits. But Bad Bunny, when he started, he started, when he first started, he started singing about what was going on in Puerto Rico. You know, he was talking about the power outages in a, a, in a territory that's from the U.S., would go days without electricity. It doesn't have, doesn't make sense. A lot of those songs, if you heard them that were not from Puerto Rico, that were not understanding that he w what he was talking about. He would speak truths along with his bad words because he would get mad because he's from there. But it was a message of social justice. So Jesus would speak some, somewhat like that, like in parables, and he would give teaching. Because remember, the ambience was tense, was was heavy, was so those who would were listening to him could not completely understand why he was causing problems. That's why he said, "He who has ears, hear, listen. He who has God and wants to live according to God's will, you can not only hear but also understand the message." And Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 14, talks about the, the cle if you have your phones, you can open them up there. <coughs> chapter 4, the parable talks about the parable of the sower. Verse 14 says, the sower soweth the word. Up to here. Read them at home. He's talking about about seeds and sowing. 
And of all his speech that he gives, he gives a key. Okay? The seed is the word that's being planted or sowing. I want you to want you want to do a little exercise. Sit there and close your eyes. You're in a place where there's a lake, a mountain in the background. You know there's there's a teacher that is teaching. He's not teaching in the synagogue today, which is a temple like today or a sanctuary. He's doing it outside today. The view is beautiful. We're all sitting here at the, by the beach, at the beach of the, the Sea of Galilee, and we're hearing a teaching. We're listening to a teaching. And there's a multitude of people. The first question is of this background that I'm seeing that is being named in the previous chapter is, why isn't he in the synagogue? Why is Jesus teaching from a boat? I think so. Now, this is just my theory. Then maybe because a lot of people were following him and they didn't fit in the synagogue. Simple explanation. Maybe so the poor could come close to him so they can hear him better. But it does not. But maybe at the same time, it's not good because he was in a boat, speaking from a boat, and to be close to him, they would have to get in the water. Or it could be there's an upper. Or there could be that the fact that in the temple, there were the religious police, you could say. And they would control who would come in and who can't come in, who cannot come in. The seeds. In the previous verses, now that you're in this in this uh, background, he's talking about the city. You can keep your eyes closed if you want to. And he starts his speech talking about a sower that was throwing seeds, and one seed landed here, another one's landed there, the other one over there. And he's talking all the time about seeds. When I was reading these verses, I was intrigued by the word seed. Because everything uh, that I have heard in other sermons that I've heard in the past, and also Pastor Angel, who's here, who's been preaching forever, he may even correct me after the service, but he was teaching these verses as the seed is the word of God. And the sower is the preacher. Up to a certain degree, I could see it that way. But I have a problem. But the word of God as, as such did not exist at that time. Did you understand me? So, so I have to see the background of the gospel to be able to understand what was he referring to when he talks about the seeds? And I came to this conclusion. The seed is like the word as it is on verse 14. Now, if this didn't exist, what could have been? What could the seed be? As I'm deciphering the word, I remember that the Bible says that the Word was God. The Word is Jesus who became flesh. God made flesh. And if I go a little beyond that, I would say that the Word is God's work. God's work that is being planted. Now, when I make that connection, my eyes opened up and I got very encouraged and I wanted to start writing, but I, we don't have here all day to do this. So, 
the seed to me is like God's work that's invisible. Jesus is is the kingdom of God that's near that's near. If you're reading the chapters, that's what it was being announced as John the Baptist was saying the kingdom of God is at hand. And then Jesus appears. The Jesus the kingdom of God is with us. The word of God is with us. Amongst us and in us. And that's how the verses say. Now that you have all this background, let's read the verses. And he also said on verse 26, And he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast it into the ground. That is how the kingdom of God is, as just like a man casts seeds in the ground. Pay attention. And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth brings forth fruit for herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Now, let's decipher according to what I have said. If the seed is the work of God that gives fruit, what happens? What is it telling us? This, what is this teaching? What is this lesson teaching us? That God is working on the earth because Jesus within us, amongst us, and inside of us. And even though there is a system that could be drowning us, that could be mistreating us, that God's work will continue to go forth and will bring forth fruit. And Jesus was talking to the people, telling them to be hopeful, to have hope, because God is working and will continue to work now. Now, Jesus is God made flesh. God's work has been scattered. How many of you, now listen well, how many of you, when you were packing and decided that you were going to leave your native country, you imagined that you were going to arrive to a place where you were going to see God working. Amen? I imagine that a lot of you left your country with a lot of fear, with a lot of pain, with a lot of sadness. I cannot imagine what it is to pack the minimum that we could carry, that could carry to leave to an unknown place, to an enigma, to a, a destination where I don't know what I'm going to find, to a place where I don't speak the same language and the culture is very different. I don't know. To arrive to a place where I see that God is working, but at the same time, I see that I hear a lot of chatter, comments, or voices that I hear that they're not in favor of me. I would think if the things here get bad. Now, where would I go? 
it's difficult, right? God is working. The parable of the seed of God's work or of Jesus that a lot of times we don't see him physically when he just planted. I'm not in, I'm not in agricultural. And I'm just, I'm just learning how to plant only in the months that we can not like in florida on your on your countries that you do it all year round but but if you plant things too late in the year you won't be you won't have anything like how happened last year and if you do it too early they won't work either so you have to be specific time so what happens is that god's work is functioning in what we can't see in the invisible just like the seed that's there under the earth and when I've seen the seed packets when I see the seeds they're they're dry have you seen the seeds right like there's a process an interesting process that simulates to how Jesus is it's the plant then the seed the seed gets dry like it dies and then it comes back to life again I plant that seed, dried, and a lot of times may go through a few days, sometimes a few weeks. But what happens? It looks like a little sprout, a little sprout coming up, something green. And I get excited because I love plants. A lot of them don't survive, but I like them. My daughter loves plants and always tells me, Mom, your mom mom your plant needs help i'm gonna take them home with me <laughs> but the hope to see something green there it's fascinating that i put something dry inside that earth or that dirt and i put a lot of water sometimes a lot of water but i put water and a few days it starts to spring out that starts showing that that seed, it's giving life. God's work, my dear beloved, in this teaching, simulating to the time in which Jesus was teaching, which was a time with a lot of turmoil, a difficult time for them, shows us that God, God is active even when we don't see him when we ask God where are you that I don't see you why am I drowning in debt and I can't come out ahead God is active even though you cannot see him. Now, what happens? One plants, one waters, and then one is like, hmm, sit there and wait to where to sprout, and then it starts growing. I don't, I don't, I don't plant a lot of food. My daughter does. I don't. I plant, I plant, I plant flowers. Uh, morning glory. This year, I planted. I plant them in April then. This week I just found out it had flowers. All this month patiently and impatient waiting for this plant for it to wait for it to bloom. I almost pulled it out. I thought it had bad seeds. But finally it gave me flowers. It gave me pink and blue flowers from the same plant incredible beautiful there was something that was happening that I wasn't seeing now with this God's work which is unseen it's invisible that God is active in the world even in Venezuela in Colombia 
in Puerto Rico, even in Africa, in Israel, Gaza, God is active. We don't see him because a lot of things, a lot of ugly things are around it. A lot of difficulty, but God's work still moves forward. That will spring out and give forth fruit. At times, to see the fruit of God's work, we need to analyze ourselves and see what is our responsibilities. What is it that we have to do? He who sows will plant the seeds. But they have your responsibility to do something. Like me, it was my responsibility to water my plants. Yeah? If I don't water my plants, the plants won't grow. And my daughter says that, Mom, not only water, but also fertilizer. So I got some fertilizer bag and I put on there. Because I don't want to put a lot either also because I, but I put about two or three grains of that. Sometimes to see God's work that's active and doesn't stop functioning, we also want to do something. Now, I invite you to analyze yourself. What is my part? What is it that I have to do? What is my responsibility so that I can see what God wants to do to see his work give fruit God in the world God in the world and even in these times God Jesus would give a message because he wanted for those that were listening to change to change they would be just or righteous that would lead with justice Take care of the widow. Take care of the sick. All of that's still standing. And you know that's inside of each one of us. God's work. It's in this. God's work. God's word is inside of us. That seed. And the world will see. How each one of us will reveal God's work through our lives. Amen? I invite you to self-analyze. God bless.